Let's, let's take a look at the front pages. The Finder newspaper, pre-mixed fuel, government saves 36 million Ghana cities. Minister promises 80,000 fisheries jobs. Ofuswam Pofu, Kweku Boahin, granted 100,000 bill each. SEC orders Gold Coast Fund to cease taking new investments. And GRA to introduce payment of tax in mobile via mobile money. The Ghanaian Times, police deploy 14,000 personnel to ensure safety uh, during Easter celebrations. First Lady unveils new FDA logo. President swears in Bono Oti, regional ministers. And of Swampofo, Kwekubwahi granted bail. The Daily Guide, NDC exposed in NHI investment. NDC leaked tape. Mahama storms court for Ofosu Ampofo. Dangote praises Akufuado's leadership. An exonerated Anas boy murder suspect released. Fisheries Ministry saved 36 million uh, Ghana cities from premix fuel. And finally, a front page of the Daily Graphic. Demand for new districts. Wait for EC. President asks traditional authorities. ITU partners NCA for quality service training. Echima signs sister city partnership with Maunao. And those are the front page stories. My guest this morning is Kadri Abdul Rauf. He's the communications director of the Convention People's Party. Asalaamu. <laughs> Dr. Bernard Okoboy is the MP for Lejokuku and he is here on behalf of the MPP. Doc, welcome. Good morning. How are yeah, you doing? Yeah, my brother. Yeah. Fine, my I, like, I like the African word that it comes to you. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, Comrade yes, Mutala yes, Mohammed yes, is here. So, Comrade, good morning. <coughs> He's here on behalf of the MPC. Say, say nothing. <laughs> the only thing I will say How are is you? your new name. How are you? Because no. we have Lejo Kuku Jay Z. No. Your conscience is. <laughs> you <was> can't <laughs> duplicate Jay Z. Jay Z is his. So. Lejo Kuku Jay Z. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, welcome. Uh, Abdul, your chairman has been made uh, a chief, traditional leader. Yeah. So he's left the party. Well, um, not officially, okay. but by necessary implication. He's left unofficially. <laughs> by necessary implication, it means that he cannot do active politics again. Right. But one thing I can always say about Professor Idele is that once an Nkrumah is, always an Nkrumah is. So I believe that he would always be there to support us in whatever okay. way he can. So there's an acting chairman now? Uh, not official, but of course there by necessary implication. What are you waiting for? By ne we are yet to do our central committee meeting. And mm -hmm. once we meet, we will just officialize things. But by necessary implication, okay. you know, one, uh, the first vice would act as a chairman until we go to Congress. I see. Okay, Doc, your, the reins are here. Uh, your road. Yesterday, somebody <laughs> gave me a very graphic picture of what happened on Sunday and Monday. Uh, what is the new status of your road? Is the contractor back? Yeah, Johnny. Uh, let me say a very good morning to my brothers here and also to your viewers and uh, those watching from the Lejukuku constituency. So the road has been given out on uh, contract. Uh, there's a contractor who has actually moved to the road, mm. but uh, the pace of work is slow, I admit. Uh, he started from the Manet police station. Okay. And uh, what I have uh, learned or I've gone to research is that is a contractor who operates within the West African sub region okay. and is making efforts to bring his machines. I also admit that it's taking quite some time because I know he was asked to give him the contract somewhere mm. December and I think we're in April. So, you know, um, the uh, sometimes the uh, machine of state, when you are trying to get something done, mm. You, you have some inertia, but I'm pushing it as... Yesterday, I was with the minister. Okay. And, and uh, he told me he told me that uh, he's actually called a few meetings on Elekma okay. Road. I know, you know, this morning I told you, honestly, when you speak about a challenge for some time, it gets to a place, then your, your explanations mm. are not weighty anymore. Yeah. You just want action. So I really don't want to talk and talk about it, but just for people, I mean, constituents to know that 
I know it's a big challenge, you know, and uh, I, I am not too happy. But I, I, I get the sense from the minister that they are doing whatever they can. Okay. So, um, I think we should. We've pushed for quite some time. Okay. It does not make sense to let go of the uh, persistence now. So we'll continue to. Persist. I'm asking that because it, it, there, there seems to be a similar situation at the Ashalabutri area, okay. where the contractor was giving the contract sometime last year. He moved his things there, and he has left site. So yeah. they you know, give them the contract. Well, yeah, well, well, they well, get well. onto the site. Yeah. And then they go. One thing I've, I've, I haven't taken their like, mobilization. You see, one thing I've, one thing I've uh, usually are two things with uh, contractors okay. that I've learned this, this short time. I mean, you have those who genuinely, when you give them a contract, they make a lot of effort, go okay. on the road, okay. and actually slow the work when they are hard, very hard pressed with finance as okay. a cash flow. There are others also who come and create the impression that they have the capacity to do the road. Okay. Just to get hold of the contract. Mm. And then they sort of take you to ransom. Because now that they are holding the contract, to let to to, to abrogate or terminate the contract is also a whole process. Right. And they know that sometimes you just look at the challenge or the ordeal of the termination process mm. and then just uh, tolerate their behavior. Okay. Because the, the contractor that was on this Lekma Road, mm. proud to this contractor we give it. Look, honestly, I went to places with this contractor. I got meetings organized at finance for one contractor mm. just to give him assurances. I managed to get him paid one or two installments. He was given assurance that he would be paid. And yet, sometimes myself would be calling him. He wouldn't pick. You <laughs> ask him to come for a meeting. No, I've not mentioned any names. You okay. know? But, I mean, no, no. I, I think that there is a legitimate ground for... No, no, of the contract. no, no, no. That's frustration. Exactly. Yeah. So frustration the point I'm making is that somebody acquires a contract, uh, you know, falsely, you know, he told a lie to yeah. get the that contract. That can also be another ground Grounds for, for yes. Yeah. So the it's really lie to get the yeah. No, no. But if if this contract like this, this new contractor, I'm not saying he told a lie, but the minister. Why did he take it from uncle, the yes. contractor? No, no. The minister insisted that he wanted someone with the capacity to pre-finance. We all agree that we have challenges with financing. And what they didn't want is for someone to go on this road and later come to the ministry and say, because I've not been paid a certificate, mm -hmm. I can't work. Okay. So the grounds was that we want someone with the capacity to finish off this road. We are going to pay, mm -hmm. but we, uh, we want flexible What's the guarantee payment? you pay when you have already contractors who have done works that your government has failed to pay? But you see, when you were just explaining, I was just... Let, let me learn. Him. Just a sentence. Okay. Let, let me learn. No, no. You <laughs> see, <laughs> look, look. The previous contractor, you see, these are state matters. Right. And going forward, we all must learn What happened them. to the... Good. No, the previous... Oh, with Allah. Oh, no, no, I'll explain short. The previous contractor, myself... This is not a main topic. No, no, I know, I know. I went to the ministry. I went to budget ministry. I was chasing it personally. Okay. He had about six certificates that were unpaid. Okay. Can you imagine? Six raised certificates, different ones. Each averaged about four million. So this guy was owed about 24 million Ghana cities. Okay. And one contractor had raised certificate one, two, three, four, five, six. And he has not been paid. Not any of them. They All understand this. why if you call him. So, yes. So, <laughs> yes. So when we came, this is proud to our coming. Okay. I sort of pushed he got one paid. Okay. Then we were working on a second one. But what the ministry was saying is that we, the state before we came was only a lot of people. Okay. If you are waiting for us to clear all the 25 before you go on the road, it means we would be paying you money and yet nobody sees any work. Right. How? So, oh, but that's because, the arrangement. Because true, if it is all ah. 24 yes. million. And, and you Johnny, all, listen, oh. 24 million cities was not for only that particular project. No, no, no. I'm, so, so no, 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 I'm talking about no, 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 this the excuse, one project. The excuse given by the minister Mutala. is bonkers. No, no, no wait. If the excuse is bonkers. You took the job from him. Look, one minute. Oh, listen, listen. Look, one minute. Oh, listen, listen. 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 Oh, listen, but no, they, we, are, they are in, in lots. Oh, we're, we're, yeah. talking, we're, we're talking about the Lekma Road yes, yes. And, and also the Ashalemboche Road. No. Why, why people would take contracts and, 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 and bring I, their machines there yeah. and leave the, the look, things look, look. and the roads will say So this gentleman, road. there was a marathon meeting. I sat in it for about six hours at the ministry. All the directors, all those at Lekma Roads with only this contractor. And he gave the minister an assurance okay. that I can go on this road in days. 
if they make that so first that can uh, payment, be a legitimate okay. ground for the termination uh, yes, of the contract. Yes, in fact, so that's the grounds on which yeah. they stood to terminate the no, first it's, one. It's, it can when, be a no, when he ground. assured, him, it looks oh, like you are all going at him. Allow no, him to make know, his. I know, no, but that, you that, will have your thing. No, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. You will have your, you will have your. Going forward, I'm saying that we have to learn as a country. I want to look at solutions irrespective of government. The way to go is for contractors mm. not to continue to go and take government contracts when they know serious. that True. usually the payments don't come. Right. Because the people have this mind that are buying the award, they be a... And you see, if you're a new government and you take office, mm. and one contractor mm. is presenting six different certificates, and even the work is done, maybe because of the weather and other things, he's left the road, this contractor had abandoned our road about right. a year before the yeah, coming. So you are, you are virtually paying into a big hole. And if you tell citizens that you've paid, nobody wants to listen. Are you what I'm saying? Assuming nobody was owed on that road, mm. I'm sure those two payments that this government made could have gotten big mobilization for someone. Maybe they also had challenges proud to their coming. You know, it's been right. perennial. Mm. So the lesson is that contractors must be true to themselves. If you raise one, two certificates, you are not paid. Don't go to three, four, five, six, like we, we had right. in this kind of situation. Okay. And then we can make... We'll put you know, step the, the reason why the contractor could raise four certificates even though he wasn't paid, yet he raised the certificate Tell and me. Because he was convinced that that government which was in power would behave responsibly and would pay. Okay. We, we are talking about a government where you have a former GFA boss who mm. said mm. that contract, contractors were given jobs under the NDC. Their money will rot. And you see, when my brother was talking, I can empathize with him. I have been a member of parliament before. Mm. But he did a lot of politics with that particular rule. One of the reasons, please, one of the reasons why he was given the mandate was how he bastardized the then MP and his inability to execute the project. When he knew at that time that the MP was just an MP, mm -hmm. the road was awarded by central government. Mm. Now today, you see, there was this adverse we used to when we were young. You know, this TV license, okay, address, yes, where it's a wait until you become a parent, right? And you see how it feels to be in crisis. Mm -hmm. I think that now you have become a parent, you have seen how it feels to be in crisis because clearly, and I'm surprised my good brother is, and already I said I sympathize and empathize with you, but you did politics, your party did politics with it in that area. One of the reasons why you were elected was because of that road. So today, you see how it is now again. Uh, for the, I would just apologize to your viewing public, uh, but I need to, to, to make reference to this Dagbani or Northern proverb. I know some may be taking it's their really tradition. Really. That you see, you can't <laughs> sleep with an itching anus. Okay. Oh. And do not expect to wake up with smelling fingers. That is what is happening to him. Okay. That is what is happening to the MPP. Mm. All these excuses he's now... The people are suffering. Yes, all these excuses he's finding now. Those <coughs> excuses were existing. Those reasons were there. How come that contractors were paid? In fact, we have never had a delay in paying contractors ever, at least in this fourth republic, than we have had this time. Even when the NDC won elections in 2008. There was a backlog that there was I'm gold. saying that even when NDC won elections in 2008, the NDC didn't say that we will not pay contractors because we felt that the, the contracts were awarded to them by the NPP. NDC, NDC didn't do that. You people have said it with alacrity. So I'm saying that the reason why people would not want to go and do the job, even though some payments have been extended to them, is because they can't trust this government. Okay. Because if we have done Karagal, I'll tell you, the Kamali Karaga road, for example, mm -hmm. the contractor did a tremendous job. He hasn't been paid. He hasn't been paid a dime. You go to Karaga Gushegu, a contract which was awarded under the NDC. Do you know it has found itself into the Sino <coughs> project? And another example. Look, you... You went to Tamale and cut saw for for a and a, what's the name the interchange. interchange. Mm. Well, the people of Tamale would love to have an interchange, but is it a priority? If you listen to Joy, the interviews there, the people say, "Look, yes, we would we would love to have that, but currently we don't have portable water to drink. There are already roads that are abandoned. Mm. Now, how can you go to cut a sword when nothing of that contract has been done yet? What presidents do?" When you go to cut sword, then the contract would have been awarded. Then you go there with the contractor. You go and cut sword and expect it to last for about one year. Nothing of it, nothing. No bidding, no contract, no nothing. Yet the president went there with all the jamborees, with all the entire state apparatus at the expense of the state to cut sword. For what? What gains? Clearly, 
it tells you that there is so much desperation on the part of this government for their inability to deliver based on the promises they I, made. I, and that is why they are I going to I am concerned about the people who live there, the school children who can't go to school Absolutely. when it rains. That, that's my focus, not yeah. to you know have a political twist. But Abdul, tell Which me. Which political twist? It's uh, political. Uh, Abdul, tell me. You are, you are going getting closer to the No, the but I'm saying that here. which political, which <laughs> political <laughs> twist? It's political. Abdul, take, yeah. take a bite on this matter. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think that my, my, my personal view is that given the uh, the issue that has been presented by uh, Dr. Bernard. I think that we have to get it very clear. <laughs> when you enter into contracts, mm. there are certain factors or actors that can negate the contract. Mm. And then from the narrative that he has just given us, looking at it from the legal perspective, one, I can see an issue of misrepresentation. If you don't have the capacity. That's the side of the story. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So I'm doing the analysis on the basis of his type. If you do not have the capacity, to undertake a contract and you say you have the capacity and they give me this contract and they give it to you and you cannot that is misrepresentation now the contract is given to you you are not able to execute and when they are calling you you don't pay that is frustration so me i think that on grounds of law there are several factors that go against the contract that the, the basis of which the contract should be taken away from him i have a particular interest in this issue because look when you look at any time the rainy season is about to start, mm -hmm. our heart begins to crack because we know that lives are going to be lost. Right. Yeah. And then several factors can be attributed to it, including poor roads. The Boutry Road that you are talking mm -hmm. about, that's where I apply every morning. I live at Lakeside Estate. Okay. And a road that was constructed less than two years ago has already been washed off. So mm -hmm. if you are coming, in fact, we would, every, every six months, you have to change your shocks if you live in, on, on that uh, uh, side of the town. Mm -hmm. So me, I think that we have to take this, thing, this issue serious. And also, when it comes to, you know, the construction and the flooding of Accra and what have you, you know, the government has got to remember and realize that lives are very, very important. Mm -hmm. Ghanaian lives must not be lost. Because, look, it's, not, it's only in Ghana that you would know that this rainy season, as it's about to commence, people are going to die, and yet people will die, and we are doing nothing about it. The, the value for money audit. Whose job is it to do? Of course. If the road is constructed <coughs> less than two years, is washed away, portals develop, nobody is held accountable, yet we have paid millions of cities. No, for the, it. the issues are cross cutting. You understand? Of course, the engineers, you know, those at the ministry awarding the contracts and what have you, all have their share of the blame. But the entirety of the blame also comes back to government because when you are leading a state, you have duty to ensure that the right thing is done. Look at the motorway. It's been contracted no less than 50 years, mm -hmm. and it's still very strong and solid. And now it's actually the expired. It expired at age 50. Yes, mm -hmm. but and it's still strong and solid. And then you see, sometimes when we speak from the Convention People's Party, we believe that when you are going to do projects for the people, you do it not with the intention of securing or achieving some political points, but you should do it because the people deserve that project. Mm -hmm. And that explains why, after 50 years, the motorway is still very strong and solid. So what I want to say is that even if our you know, contractors and then our directors and those who award contracts at the ministries do not really care about the nature and quality of rules that are being constructed in this country, mm. at least human lives, they should actually pay attention to it. Okay. And then Kumri Mutala will bear me out. That there is a clear verse in the Quran that says that because of the value that Allah places on human life, mm. if you waste away a single human life unjustifiably, it is as though you have wasted the life of the entirety of humanity. Yeah. But it's, it so appears who, that in who this who is this country, verse for? I'm just saying it it's to for people. This government. In fact, <laughs> those that matter, they, the contractors, <laughs> and then, then no, even, even I think that, us. and even the contractors, particularly the okay. contractors. Particularly. So this verse is for them. Yes. <laughs> Repeat it, they are watching, they are listening. I'm, I'm repeating, and this I'm quoting from the Quran, okay. yes. that because of the value that Allah places on human life, mm. uh, if you actually do your work in a manner, okay. shoddy, so that at the end of the day, rains will wash it off and then people will die, you are responsible for the death of those people. Okay. And then if you take away the life of a single human being unjustifiably, okay. it is as though you have taken away the life of the entirety of humanity. Say good so morning to the roads so minister. That is why say good morning to the roads minister. minister. I say a very good morning to yes, the yes, I'm not doing that, that is why those who engage in terrorism okay. in the name of Islam have gotten it completely wrong. Mm. In fact, the, the verse says that if you kill an individual, a person, mm. unjustifiably, 
it's as though you have killed an entire nation. Right. Now, you can have a justification for wrongs or ills mm. that is perceived, perpetrated against either your religion or your faith mm. by any person or group of persons. Okay. And then you go and bomb people. Yeah. You would have killed innocent people. So there sure. can't be any justification right. whatsoever. Okay. But you see, Johnny, no, no, it, it is important for us to understand one thing. You've made no, it, I beg you. It's, but why do you want to come back? Because, because I've made I am, enough. Because I'm dying. No, please. Uh, please. It's about rules. <laughs> okay. It's let's about let's rules. Change, let's change. I think we have had enough talk about Johnny, I wanted to make one. You know what? When people in a community decide, assuming that is the case, without admitting, okay. to vote out their leader because they think that they are suffering as a result of a particular road. It is not an error on their part. Okay. And so as a leader, because I know that it is within their right to keep me or let me go based on what they've seen on the road, they say that MPs don't construct road, which, I mean, purely is true. But, but, but you've got to oh, promise oh, them listen, that road will be done. But because you lead the people, if that is their concern, you must share in that challenge. Mm -hmm. And you can, and you have to be responsible for that. That is the reason why I have taken a lot of steps on this road. Okay. And honestly, should this road materialize, it would be very strange if somebody says that as a leader, I was not part of the process. Okay. From here, I'm going to the ministry. On every single working day, I go there. And maybe that is why they were upset with some leaders. They know you are not the one supposed to. But they believe that as the one leading them. Are you suggesting he was? He was, okay. he was also doing what Thank you I very much. Uh, uh, I, I, I believe that I believe that members see, of parliament see, are supposed to be legislating the, the was doing in the exactly House of Legislation. What, what but doing. when yes. they mount the campaign platforms, so the things they you, promise right. to the people is what the people hold them by. Let's move on. Do you know the page page four? Do you know the Tamamoto way? I'm not talking the Tamamoto way. It was what Nkrumah described as the triangular road. Right. It was going to extend to central western region, right. to Ashanti northern region. These guys said it was a useless venture. And Today, look at them. You, was you said it was highly inflated. Who said that called tradition? Okay. I'm saying that you okay. said it was highly inflated. Page four of okay. the final newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> The Security yeah, and Exchange yeah, Commission, uh, SEC, has directed Gold Coast Fund Management Limited to seize the collection of new uh, fund and investment in the face of numerous complaints from clients. According to the commission, it is aware of the plight of investors, especially those who are unable to receive returns. SEC said it is working with Gold Coast Fund Management to secure a lasting solution to its liquidity challenges in the mutual interest of all the stakeholders. In a statement issued in Accra, the Commission stated that it was therefore reviewing the proposals uh, that the Gold Coast Fund Management has submitted to it in a bid to replace its structured finance uh, product so it would be able to meet all its payments and obligations to its customers and investments. We have had uh, a similar trumpet being blown by SEC before, not so long ago. The after effects are there for all of us to see. Uh, Comrade, I'll start with you. Uh, is that cause for alarm? Well, uh, let me say good morning to your cherry. Oh, you have said that already. Yes, it's okay. I have, <laughs> I have been great. Okay. Why are you on me? Let's go. Let's moment. go. Uh, and also Let to just provide this information for the benefits of your viewing public. When my brother made references to how human life is valued, you know, references with the Quran is Quran chapter 17, verse 70, Surah al okay. And Allah didn't just say Muslims. He said, children of Adam. So right. it means that it all, of us. all of us. Yeah. That's what Allah said right. in the verse. I think that yes, it's, it's a worry for concern. And mm -hmm. I think that when such whistles are blown, people should take them serious. It has to do with people's money. It has to do with investment, the livelihood of people. Mm -hmm. But like I said, we need to be very sincere, particularly government needs to be very sincere. Our position we take in this business of politics must be consistent or be, seen, or be seen to be consistent. That if a political you know, party or mm -hmm. a candidate takes a position, even in opposition, once you even have the power, I think that for the purposes of consistency, you need to take the same position. Unfortunately, okay. that is what we don't seem to get. There were justifications for the problems we had with the DKM and others. We have a president who was then the candidate who promised that ABCD was going to be done. They were going to pay those people, even though they haven't. Now, if people are now demanding that, yes, you made promises that you are going to pay, 
pay us. And I think that that is a concern. Okay. The other thing has to do with the unfair treatment meted out to some of these financial institutions. Of a, we were discussing one of the reasons for closing down certain banks, specifically mm -hmm. Heritage Bank, was the fact that the gentleman is in court and the fact that the, the risk could not be, 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 be tolerated because the gentleman had about 60% or less of mm. shares of the bank. We know a bank in this country where the owner of the bank holds 99% and the wife holds 10%. Yet that bank <coughs> is not... 99 not, plus 10 99. is, is 100. I say 99, the wife has one. Okay, one. You making said, it 10. Said 10%. I didn't say oh, that. No. What? You said 99 plus 10. I said 99. That is lapsus lungua. Maybe okay. 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 Uh, uh, No, but I think that I don't know where you slept <laughs> yesterday. No, no, no I can just, understand. I'm Sometimes you do so, and the economic challenges can make people <laughs> behave in a way. I, but I, I, so I guess, if you no. say 99 plus 10, and I I, I'm, I'm adding up, you know, to you say it's 109. You well, and I can understand because of the economic challenges. All of us. I mean, it does. It does. So I'm saying that the person holds 99 percent, the wife holds one percent. Mm. So you can see clearly that there can't be any justification. Some banks, mm. who indeed were actually suffering the same way other banks were considered to be suffering, those banks for some reasons have been arranged to be financial. Uh, what's the name? Micro finance institutions. Why didn't government do that? But let's also be conscious mm. of the fact that all these things that were done were done to a new or for the benefit of the foreign banks. And let's get it. And I say this because... Not to clean the system? To clean the system is one. I am not saying, we should, I'm not saying we should compromise. Okay. That's not what I am suggesting. Mm. I'm not suggesting that we should compromise rules, regulations, govern the conduct of those who operate inside. Okay. But I'm saying that, that when you are in extreme realities, you need extreme resolutions. Everywhere in the world, there are instances where, where governments intervene to assist financial institutions because of the peculiar nature and the kind of activities they engage in. Now, if you look at the domestic local banks that have been closed, okay. jobs have been lost, businesses have collapsed, some have actually lost their lives. I'm saying that was there any other way government could intervene, mm. side that we don't have them collapse. The kinds of loans that are given to these our mothers and, and sisters who are selling on the street, mm. petty traders, this foreign banks won't give such loans. Okay. These foreign banks won't do that. Now, you look at the kind of businesses they engage in, and I thought that government could have. Why would you spend about 18 billion Ghana cities to collapse banks? 18 billion. Government is now denying they said they spent 15 or 16 billion. Even that is huge. You spend that much to collapse banks. It doesn't make sense. That couldn't have been a, a, a move that government could take mm. to assist these banks, see how best they can. Because mind you, none of them, until this issue came up, defaulted in, the, in meeting their you know, business obligations mm. with their, their, their customers. None of them. So I thought that government could have. Communication is also very important. That when communication what is done. What could government have done? I'm saying that identify some of the problems. Some okay. of the banks, their problems were that, look, government, you owe us. Okay. Because contractors were not paid. A lot of them gave loans to, to contractors. Unibank, for example, was one classical example that, look, we, government, you owe us. <coughs> pay contractors, and then we could have some strength to be able to meet some of the requirements. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that there could have been a way. And that is why I'm saying we are not doing this. Irrespective in of the fact that some, some of them have submitted documents that were not complete. Some persons who were not qualified to serve on the board were there some of the as the Bank some of, of Ghana issues, said. some of the issues have actually been challenged. And mind you, some, some are even in court right. over some, some of court, these yes. issues. So we can't say for certainty. But what I'm simply saying is that, look, in as much as we should not compromise, you know, wrongs, mm -hmm. uh, 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 rights, and, 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 and do what is wrong, I still think that there could have been a way. And I'm saying this, making comparison with what happened in other jurisdictions. Right. That you look at the peculiar nature, mm. the kinds of activities that these financial institutions engage in. Was there mm. any other way, rather than taking this decision which led mm. to the collapse of the banks, which also led to several people losing their jobs in a country mm. that is already depressed, that is already struggling to create the needed jobs. And again, you compare the justifications for closing certain banks alongside with existing financial institutions okay. who have even worst case, yet these things are not done. So I'm saying that maybe we need, in going forward, we need to look at some of this, these okay. issues. Yeah. This whistle that has been blown, 
Have they had some interactions? Have they had some discussions? Have they actually looked at the fan the books of that particular they, they, are, they have actually accepted a proposal of the uh, SEC to to solve this amicably. <coughs> and they are saying that there are liquidity challenges because contractors haven't been paid. Yes. You know, you remember when the, the announcement was made by the Bank of Ghana? The moment you do that, people begin to get worried. Then they would have to go withdrawing their money. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. this country, we're also indebted. I mean, every country is indebted. The fact that the financial institution is having some debts on its book doesn't mean that it can't operate. As long as they meet the financial requirements of their customers, mm -hmm. I thought that there could have been a more appropriate way of dealing with them. But, but when but people keep massing up at their gates to look for their what investments and they the massing yeah. up, mm -hmm. the, What occasioned the massing up was the kind of communication that was put out there. Okay. That occasioned that until those public pronouncements were made, I really don't think that people were. If anybody has any evidence okay. that people were demanding their money to take their investment and others, before okay. even the, the such kind of pronouncement were made, then I I I am yet to find out okay. nothing. So I'm <laughs> saying that communication is very important. You have a Bank of Ghana, a governor of Bank of Ghana, who speaks like a serial caller. He 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 enjoys speaking to the media. Mind that, you, that's unfair to him. No, a serial caller. Look, is, is I can unfair. tell you, uh, no, but serial calling is not bad. It's, it's unfair. But serial callers are not bad. Mm. Serial, the, 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 the analysis I'm just making, serial callers, they call. Okay. They call onto programs to defend their party, defend what they believe in. Okay. Okay? A bank of Ghana, you don't necessarily need to be speaking out at every single opportunity you get. And that is the reason why okay. I'm making that, that comparison. Thank you very much. We ought yeah. to be very careful because even sneezing alone, one single statement of a governor of Bank of Ghana can put everything out of gear. And he ought to be responsible. Doc. Uh, the SEC has made the order. Gold Coast says, yes, we have heard you. We agree to this call. We are working together at it. Yeah. But the basic <clears> problem <throat> is that contractors owe us and it is affecting our liquidity, which is why we have not been able to sort yeah, this out. My brother, you know what? I it, it's more like the old story be yeah. being made see, new. <clears throat> I am privileged to sit in the Finance Committee of Parliament. Right. We had an interaction with the Bank of Ghana. When you look at the reports mm. that the banking supervision department have had about three, four years prior to these reforms, you wonder why they allowed some of these banks to still continue in their old ways in terms of their risk management, in terms of their credit uh, this thing, okay. handling. How come they had all these reports and yet were looking? All the reports show that they were headed towards a ditch. They were going to crash with their funds of over 1 million depositors mm. and also crashed with the workers that they had employed. And yet they were looking. Are up. you suggesting negligence of duty? I'm telling you, why do you think the ethics committee was set? These are things that are factual. Mm. So we asked the BOG, how come you have these technocrats who are trained and we're watching? He said we should go forward and that the only thing he can ascribe, oh. I mean, he can only think of either political pressure or like he, de he didn't see why they were not acting. Okay. And honestly, the head of the B BSD, since we came, the bank itself changed him and took him somewhere. And it's because of such internal things that he set up the ethics committee. Because the Banking Act did not make provision for sanctions against the regulators should they sleep on their job. Okay. So we've made some recommendations so that they too will not sleep. So... You see, I don't but, but the Bank of Ghana is supposed to be independent. Isn't no, it? Please, it? look, this country, <laughs> that independence, it's some extent. If you are real to yourself, when you have a BOG governor okay. who is normally appointed by the executive, what it means is that ultimately their actions, there is some consequence on the government. Mm. That is why when uh, uh, DKM collapsed, the citizen was going to hold the government responsible. You know why? Because there is a state agency that should regulate these things. And because they are not a private agency, that's why they allow you, the, the, the executive, mm. to choose the head. Right. Knowing that if the head sleeps on the job, you pay for the price. Now, you know what I'm saying? Again. Now, quickly, let me come. 12 billion cities was involved in cleaning up the banks. No, Look, more than oh, that. please. Okay. Allow, I, allow, I, allow him to make his point, please. The I look, of finance statement is different from what he's saying. Okay. I said, let's say more than that. He more than 15. 12 billion. <laughs> no, no problem. More than 12 billion. I'm mentioning the figure. This is significant in our economy. But this is a government that was ready to spend this in doing a cleanup. We could have left the banks on their own, okay. used some of these uh, monies to fix roads, and guess what will happen? This was a, a vehicle on the motorway that had lost its engine and its brakes. 
It's transporting people. But it's just a matter of time. We're going to crash. I'm coming. Can't move. No, no, no. Oh, if you <laughs> have a car in motion, allow him. Allow him to make. If you have a car in motion, that develops a serious fault. If you put it at free, the momentum will carry it until it comes to an end. Right. So the fact that a vehicle is moving does not mean all is well. And you know what? If it is, allow no. him, gentlemen, no. allow him to okay. make his point. Please. Analogies and okay. Okay. no. So oh, not your rebuttal. Yes, 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 yes. The point I'm making is that you see <laughs> something. Okay, make your point. Yeah. Please, no you know your rebuttals see, if you have it. This government was not in a hurry to collapse the banks. The government did the professional thing. The BOG went in for consultants. Unibank was given an administrator. Okay. In fact, when they looked into their books, Damn. the situation was worse than what had been provided. And you know what? There, was a t there were attempts to try to revise some of these banks and give them liquidity. Okay. And what is even worse, Which of them? I'm coming, please. Capital Bank, under the previous regime, mm. was giving liquidity, you know, in the excess of about 400 million mm. to recapitalize. You know what they did? You know they mismanaged the funds. They even used some to set up companies elsewhere. Unibank, if you read their report, they admitted that they treated the deposits of depositors like piggy bank. Yes, Sometimes they don't even record and it. And nobody their has business. been held accountable for it. Yeah. So the point I'm making is that the law, the law made provision for sanctioning banks should they fail on their responsibility, but not the hard regulator. And so, um, Johnny, mm. under uh, Dr. Addison, the new governor, okay. BOG, has woken up to his responsibility. BOG, and you see the IMF report, the recent, the, 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 the recent IMF report mm. was very clear and unequivocal that the reforms in the banking sector has rejuvenated and reinvigorated the system. And that the reforms mm. has even cushioned the banks to have a stronger risk uh, portfolio now. Previously, but, but, but it's causing bank grants. Oh, People please, are please. massing up. You know, you know what? Demanding see, for see, their money. See, please. That's not good for business. No, I'm a doctor. What is happening is like bleeding a wound. The wound was being mismanaged. Okay. No blood is flowing through it. When the good doctor comes, he exposes the wound. Make sure it bleeds. Any wound that is not bleeding, showing red, cannot heal. And people go like, but you are the good doctor. How come with you we are bleeding? You must bleed to be put in order. Look, any banking, put, <laughs> let me tell you something. So I tell you, we have to leave politics out. Right. Uh, put talk, Mutala. Talk to me. Yes, put Mutala and myself out. Get a banking expert. If you gather 10 of them here, they will tell you if Addisi had not gone on this path. You would have had banks that were operating. The next day you go there, they will not be able to be fluid. Right. No, but that is, if banks collapse suddenly, but with BHC, we've had banks collapse in this country. Why are we talking as if we've not seen them before? Why did DKM all of a sudden fizzle out? They were in the books of the BOG which as a microfinance. I'm coming. Please. The microfinance houses in uh, BA, that collapsed. Right. They were operating. God and is they, loud. Exactly. Loud. They were in operation. And then suddenly they fizzled with the deposits of uh, everybody. Let me tell you, we have about 5,000 jobs in the five banks that were affected. If this government had not intervened, this government had not invested over 12 billion. All of them could have lost their jobs. Fact, no, it was more please, I'm coming. Please, please. It, it, was that the best we could have done? Look, look. The best way to get an answer to this is to ask for the alternative from those who criticize this move. Which other path would have strengthened, sanitized the banking sector, and protected the can deposit I, of I citizens? The I'm, I'm coming. All this one, if you had had it on paper, we will be comparing the moves of the BOG mm. to that. All they say is that you've collapsed banks. When they know very well that, you know what, I'm not surprised when I saw this government move. Okay. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm wrapping up. I wasn't surprised at all mm. when I saw the current BOG governor acting in a way very different from the previous governors. Okay. He was conscious. Our government was conscious of the fact that should he continue to sleep on the job and should Ghanaians lose their deposits over one million, the price will not be borne by officials at the BOG. Whether you like it or not, I was in Bronga Afu. Many of them voted against the Estua government because of the behavior of the central bank. You know why? That's not be true. You see, because they are still... No, 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 go on. Okay, you I'm coming. That Butala, just, allow you allow see, him to make his see, point, Butala. These are some of the reasons why you might stay in opposition for long. You are in denial. I was in Sunyani several times. Anyone who meets you on the streets goes on their knees. Help us with DKM. Our lives no, are caught up. Because Please. because of Bank of Ghana. I'm saying that's not true. Look, let me land with uh, this Go Coast. Right. It took the finance committee and this government to virtually push BOG to wake up and start acting. SEC is waking up as well. Most of these fund houses and 
those uh, these uh, fund houses were operating in a very lackadaisical and unprofessional manner under the previous. They were, the monetary was weak. Irrespective of the laws? Yeah, but I told your BAG that BS, banking supervision had things, they had won banks and they were not acting. Mm. We are acting because we know there is a price to be born if you don't. Mm. But more importantly, when you act, you strengthen the system. Gold Coast, what our bank said to do, like where I agree with Mutala, is that sometimes for deposits, depositors, those who have their funds with Gold Coast, mm. saying that they should not go there anymore is not what helps. Mm. They know they don't have to go there anymore because of the challenge with releasing funds. They should not take deposits anymore. It, it, it does not help. What would assure, give assurance to depositors? Is New come and tell us that's, that's me, the word. Exactly, what you do to calm people is come and tell us that you have an idea of their asset portfolio. You have reviewed their, uh, how do you call it? They, are, they say they are presently reviewing it. Exactly. Uh, the proposals they exactly. have made to, and, to and, solve the exactly. problem. And then you give have. assurance that because of the review you've done and the assets you've captured, it is possible that should they should you come to the West Point where they cannot pay them, you can offset some assets and pay them off. Okay. These are things you need to say to assure. Abdul, take business. a bite on this. You have not had a bite. So, <clears throat> will you sing the same chorus they are singing, or yours will be different? I want to know. Well, um, first of all, whilst I believe that it is very important for the state to have a plan or a policy in place to grow indigenous businesses and businessmen. Uh, as we saw in the development experience of the newly industrializing countries where at a certain stage of their development there was a deliberate state policy you know to grow indigenous businessmen and businesses mm. whilst i believe that <coughs> is a, a very important policy that our government must uh, you know adopt on top of that i have a, f a, a general uh, 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 feeling that any person or group of persons that engage in any activity which is criminal, you know, those people must have to pay for it in some way. <coughs> and we saw it in this country, at least some of the banks that, you know, were, were, were made to close down, we saw that some of them, the activities that they were engaging is not is something no, we would not want to, you know, see on, 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 on national television. But the long and short of it is that most of them were engaged in activities that were criminal. And at a point, you know, there was a, a commitment from government to rescue them so that they could be, you know, strong enough. They would have their muscles to do business. In yeah, nobody's been punished. And then, and then, and that's where I have a problem. I think that all those that engage in activities that were criminal, they should be punished just to serve as useful lessons, you know, to other people that want to tread. If path. you come to government and say you are bleeding, so you must be helped, and they give you gauze and whatever it is to stop the bleeding, and you use it to go you and start, <laughs> and then you yeah. go and sell so, it. So, so that is the problem. And then, and, then, and, then, and then I also know, and I also know that as part of some of the deals that some of them did, we know of banks in this country, I don't want to mention which have been downgraded. <laughs> which have been downgraded. That is a fact. <laughs> and then where investments of people, poor Ghanaians, uh, you know, are being used to build churches and then sports stadia, what have you, and then go to do uh, investments abroad. Which churches? Which sports stadia? Well, I, I think that you should be <laughs> no, aware no, of what you I'm are mentioning. So yeah, but me. I have already made, which church? I have already made a statement. No, no, no. Which church? That which stadia? He deserved the right not to mention. Masi I have no, already made a statement. On my show, come, 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 you, you he come, he then you have to withdraw he that. He he look at it this way. Look at it this way. I am saying that in this country, mm. when I mentioned that people were engaged in criminal activities, you started with me, but you didn't ask me to provide examples. No, no. So but what I'm, I'm asking saying you is to provide that, what example. I'm saying is that it happened in this I'm country. I'm asking you to provide an example. At least, you know, we don't want to pour more fuel into fire. So I'll just leave it there. So what I'm saying is this. But some people's investments okay. have been taken it's outside right. the country. You know, some people's life savings have been taken outside the country for investment. And when these people queue wanting to withdraw their money to go and engage in their activity, there's no money for them to take. I do not think that is fair. I do not think that is nice. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is this. Certain criminal activities happen within our banking system. And I believe that, you know, the move to, you know, close down on these banks where actually it, it was a move in, in the right direction. However, I also have a feeling that, or can the question be asked, that these you know, well-performing banks that we see across the globe, if we actually go deep into their files, definitely I believe that the JP Morgans and whatever, they all, you, when you go deep into their files, you see activities which are also criminal. Mm -hmm. But we look at it this way, their governments do not close them down. So the view I want to express is that when someone is a criminal and you take away the criminality in that person, that person becomes a saint. So I believe that because 
of the fact that government has a role, mm. you know, in ensuring that he sanitizes our national economy and also grow Ghanaians okay. so that Ghanaians can become internationally competitive. I believe that maybe as part of the measures that government could have taken to resolve this financial crisis okay. was that maybe they could even increase some of them to form measures, those who actually had little problem that were not bordering on criminality. You could encourage them, come look, we people form measures and I'll help. But government didn't do that. Mm. Government just had to exert its strength on them. And I think that it, it, it was very, very the unfortunate. The point I was making... And also, Okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry. If, and no, also, just, 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 to, just to learn. Yeah. So I, I, the position that must be articulated is that any activity that can be classified within the realms of criminality okay. should be condemned. Must we always yeah, wait? Must we always wait for when things have gone south before we no, have the, no, the no, regulators to come to make we have these to be proactive. public and then when pronouncements? We learn, no, we have to be proactive. And when we learn from best practices, so for example, just not too long ago in 1995 when the Malaysian financial crisis started. Mm. We saw some of the measures, those who are actually into international business and banking, they know some of the measures that were taken in Malaysia. If I when the IMF came to Malaysia and told them that, you know, it wanted to help them so that they can come out of their financial crisis, Matia Mohammed said no, they didn't actually need, you know, the help of uh, IMF. They mm. knew the mistakes that they made and they are prepared to correct it. The point I'm trying to make is that when the leadership of the country, you know, is very desirous of growing and assisting citizens, mm -hmm. you know, to reach their full potentials, there is always a way that you handle some of these okay. things. We mm -hmm. are not going to, we are not all going to be sense. As for that aspect of that, which is not good, it will be there, but you have to have a delivery policy so that you can make our people. Do you know that in this country, if you are going to count billionaires, we do not have billionaires in Ghana. And me, I think that against that background we could actually come out with a state policy that would help other people to come out but where our state would turn against our people mm -hmm. who are trying to make it on the basis of some you know mistakes of them i okay. think that is, is too harsh thank you where very I much we're wrapping up where i was having a problem with the statement he made when he said that the people in brown have voted against the nbc because of the the in yeah. in action it's of the absolutely. bank of Ghana. i'm saying that look, they I voted agree. against nbc because reasons. you people lied to them no. you told them mm -hmm. that the dkm others were owned by lord no, no, no. you people your flag bearer no. promised that he was going to make those women mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. you have been exposed in a legendary fashion Mm -hmm. that all the lies you peddled, the deception with which the people in Bronhafo voted for you, they have regretted. And in fact, they expressed their regret out and loudly. Mm -hmm. So don't tell me that they voted against the NBC because of the inaction mm -hmm. of the Bank of Ghana. They voted against the NBC because mm -hmm. of the falsehood we peddled. But you see, it is strange today that he is now hiding behind IMF assessment. Look, it would be the height could of... It, could it have been a condition? Yes. It would be, it would be the height... Voted against I'm you. saying that, yes, it yes. is obvious that the people, in fact, the DKM, a lot of people yeah. had their investment in it in Brunhafu. You went and lied to them that the yes. banks, the, 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 the DKM others, were, okay. were companies set up by Lord. You know, but I'm saying All right, point. we got to go. Now, it's strange. It's strange yeah. that today, people are now using the IMF. We need to be very careful. It will be the height of naivety for anybody to assume that the IMF and the World Bank are these Britain whose institutions are independent. Look at Ecuador. Just a day after they, they immorally, the Ecuador ambassador in United Kingdom wrote to the authorities in United Kingdom. Yes. No, please. I said, you went and enhanced it. Just a day, just a day, let me make this Just a day after, the, after he immorally wrote to the United Kingdom authorities and they went in and got Assange and got in the gentleman. You know what they did? Just a day after that, the IMF approved a $4.2 billion dollar loan for Ecuador. And what bank is You said it was for a working free. Nothing has happened. To them. You promised you paid all they did. When you said it was, you said it was for Muhammad. When things were tough for you, were tough for you said that it was for the man. And you went and enhanced it. When things were tough, you went and enhanced it. it. Thank you. He did that to Mullah. Uh, he did that to Mullah. He did that to Mullah. He is a former deputy minister of trade. And at the NDC, he's been here on behalf of the NDC. Dr. Bernardo Koboy is a member of parliament for Lejukuku. He's here on behalf of the MPP. And Abdul Rauf is also the communications director of the CPP. He's been here. Thank you very much, gentlemen. The 76 uh, others at DKM are still working free. Nothing is happening.